It's mailbag time again. I spent my money so you'd have to spend yours. Just check out this stuff. There'll be links down below for most of these items. Potentially anyway. Depends what they are. Oh look at that. It's red. It goes faster. So nothing too exciting, this is just a car mount. Now the reason I got this is because my wife uses a mount very similar to this, in fact I would grab it. Here it is, and this is what's left of it. The suction cut part is ripped off it, UV got to it, you can see it's really yellow just there, it's degraded. UV is really strong in this country, it tends to break down plastics quite quickly anyway. This degraded and just fell off the windscreen. Because it's quite a large distance it's also a bit of a problem as well. That's as far as that's going to go, so here it compares like that. Let's check this one out. This one was out like that, so it's just as far. It's good. If anything, it might be slightly better. I should help improve my wife's happiness somewhat. She's um, been asking me to sort this out for a little while now. <coughs> well, like I said, it's adjustable, so you got some options there for the distance. Now, most phone mounts are only quite short. You only got a short distance, and they're basically right by the windscreen. And when you've got a vehicle which has got quite a long nose on it and quite a shallow windscreen, when you put these mounts onto it, you can't reach it, it's just too far away. I reckon this is a goer. Next item, and this is 168 Max Tools and Accessories. I've no idea what that means. Ah, okay, battery testers by Anning. 168 Max, here we go. Let's get a battery. In fact, I've got one right here, which I think is probably dead, so let's try it. Uh, uh, 8 volts. Here we go. It works. Let's check that one out. Right for same. There's been lots of issues with events. There's third-party battery-powered equipment, like some of the timer stuff is all battery-powered, and they've been having issues with batteries not being good quality. So I thought I'd chuck one of these in the vehicle we use for the events, and these, if they have battery issues, I'll just quickly measure them and see what we get. There's a wire in there. A spring of the wire, all exposed, I'm quite surprised it's exposed. I would have thought they had that tucked away inside. These weren't that expensive. Now that said, what did it say? 7.98 volts. Let's see what it actually says on the multimeter. Right, here we go. Leave it right around. 8.01. Now don't forget, this isn't putting a load on it. Well, minimal load, it's like 10 mega, isn't it? This probably has a small resistor inside it to help load it down. So you get rid of any ghost voltages, you know. So that's probably why this is reading very slightly lower because of that resistor. I'm guessing there is one there. There should be. Let's see what this is. Thanks to my supporters that help support the channel. Patreons and people that give me thumbs up as support. People like the video. Subscribing. It's very supportive. By subscribing, you get to see my future videos. So that is an SMA. And I believe that is an SMC. Pretty sure it's an SMC. I bought one of that the other day. Another one. These ones here. That will fit on one of those. Let's have a look. Let's find out. So if I've got this correct, that should push in and that should screw on. And it does. Now I've got an SMA to SMA. How helpful. Hmm. No, but seriously, I bought it because I needed SMC connectors. So I've got a male SMC and a female SMC. Both with... SMAs, although one's male, one's female. I purchased a range of different fittings recently because I was working on the Raycold Dana 2101 frequency counter and it turns out I didn't actually have any SMC connectors, no cables. So I couldn't actually plug into the modules, I had to sort of probe it really carefully and that's not really a great way of doing it when you're dealing with high frequencies. Now I've got some cables and some adapters. I've got more coming too, I think. Oh, I know what this is. It's a mystery on the bag, but I know what they are. At least I know what they're supposed to be. These are LED strips. RGB LEDs. And I've got these adapters on here, these little canters. You can just basically plug one into the other and just create a big string. You've got blue, red, green and white. I'm going to replace my motorhome strip lights which is what these are for. Um, they're failing again. Right now there's no lights on it. But this is what these are going to be going on. These are 5 meters rolls and I use all 5 meters to go right down each side. I tend to run with a purple running light. Sometimes it's green. Depends what I feel like. 
I've got it pre-programmed so I've, I've like five colours I can choose and it just runs on those and also flash orange will indicate so if you ever see my bus drive around Auckland or New Zealand anywhere and you see this motor home with RGB strip lights down the sides then you know it's me. Should we try powering up? Yeah let's do it. 12 volts, one half amps current limit, there we go. That's doing one amp, that's blue, it's a nice vivid blue that one. Red, as you can see, 1.1 amps and green is doing 1.1 amps as well. Do two colours at once, you've got yellow, do those two colours, you get purple, which is quite a nice one. It's got pinky purple. And if I that's current limiting at one half amps. Can I do all three of them at once? We can try. Here you go, here's white. There you go. All three of them. I'll check that one as well, I'm not sure it looks. Stick that one in there. So blue, red, green, ish. Hold on, just try and get on there. Not quite on. There you go, this is green. The problem with these is they don't last very long. Like, as I was saying before, the other thing with the UV. UV just breaks them down really quickly and they just don't last so I, I don't know, probably get about two years at most out of one of these strips. It's just a good thing they're not that expensive. Otherwise it'd be really really annoying. But the problem with these, they are self adhesive and they stick onto the bodywork and then you get adhesive left on the bodywork which you've got to try and clean off which is also a pain. Okay, what the hell is that? Ah, right. I was debating making one of these. Trying to still have the bloody cling wrap, don't they? Hardly necessary. Wrapping it in plastic film. Oh, that's funny. So I was actually thinking about making one of these myself, 3D printing one. And it turns out this is 3D printed. It doesn't weigh very much. Put it with very thin walls on it. So it's just a lead bender, so if you've got a component which you need to bend leads on, like a resistor or some of that through hole stuff, old school, you can put the part in here and bend the leads around, that way you can do a consistent lead bend, use standard sizes. What sizes does this allow for anyway? Let's have a look. I'm going to do this in millimetres. So the first step there is about 8 millimetres apart. Next one is going to be 10 millimetres apart. One after that is 13. Next one is 15. And this one here is about 17, maybe 18. So those are the widths you can do on this thing. So I was sort of tossing up between making one myself to 3D printing one, because I'm sure someone's done models on Thingiverse or something like that. There's bound to be models for it. Someone's bound to have done it. But I thought, well, it's only you know, literally a couple of dollars one of these. So I bought one instead. But this is the 3D printer too. I suppose it's up to you really what you want to do. 3D print one yourself or buy one which is somebody else's 3D printed but it doesn't weigh very much at all it's, it's basically hollow but it doesn't really need to be very strong so it's probably fine Big Clive would be jealous of the colour don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well if you like the videos I'm doing also check out my playlist at the end I've got loads of mailbag videos various electronic repair videos if you haven't seen them before if it's the first time here then you definitely wouldn't see them I expect I get all sorts of things transistor tester I know it's going to buy things from our bag and help to keep you guys entertained. I'll buy little bits and pieces. Could be rubbish, could be good. If I know. That's what I have a look for. Sometimes I do reviews on things. So this is a little transistor tester, which does SMD stuff as well. There's lots of variants of this on AliExpress. So maybe grab a screenshot of that or something. Have a read it if you want to read it. What size Chinese? And here it is. And the batteries. That's a pretty strong clip. Takes an eyeball battery. Well, I've got one here which is basically flat. So let's um, see if it will run off this one. My LCR meter didn't like it, so I took it out. Um, yeah, that's lighting up. 7.9 volts. So it's just got these plug in leads. Just get a capacitor which I Think is bad. This 
the Tesla capacitor. The SR 14 ohms, that sounds about right actually, and 21.7 microfarad. So 22 microfarad, 50 volt, but I do remember this was fairly high resistance, so yeah, that seems to work. Let's chuck a tantalum in there. I thought the positive was. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't matter. Anyway, it's got these like spring clip things which it kind of pushes into. Of course, sure how to use it yet. Twenty-four microfarad, and zero ohms. And it is a twenty-two microfarad. That's not bad. It's actually working all right. Oh look, you've got these frequency generator as well. It's got these probes on here. Rotor encoder, contrast switch off, transistor frequency here. Both go downwards. I've gone one down, one going up. Hmm. That seems to work alright. That's that. I might leave that battery in there. Seems to be powering that okay. I pulled this out my LCR because it's looking a bit low. Look at the probes. See if these are any good or if they're any rubbish. The ones are rubbish. Uh, actually, it's not too bad. Oh, no, nah, it's just sort of... Yeah, they're kind of what you expect for a cheap meter. There's a bit of wiggle in there, stuff like that, but they kind of are right. Might be okay. Let's plug these in, see what happens. Why do these always have these little plugs in the end of them? Like, these little dummy plug things. Just, why? You just take them out and never serve the first server again. It's like a single-use thing. Because, you know, pointless. All right, let's try between one and three. Like that. Turn it back on again. And we shall oh, measure the resistor. Stay. Measuring resistance. Interesting. It's detecting that. Alright, let's stick that on there. Which again. Detect the capacitor. Okay, 10.57, the SR 0.68, so 10 microfarad, actually sounds about right, this thing seems to work okay. Okay, so looks like this one is the one I have to use to turn it off, maybe, hmm, maybe it lies on auto power, I'm sure I was turning it off before, that's weird, maybe it's a battery. No, do that. No, that seems to be okay. The reason I got this is I thought it's got this nice little pad here for checking service mount parts out. That could be handy. Sometimes a bit of a pain trying to work on things and trying to measure them. Service mount transistors are a real pain sometimes. You can't exactly get your probes on there very easy. Thought, on this pad here, I'm going to sort of stick it on the pad and just hold them down. I'll tell you what it's like. There's the plan. But the fact does the SR as well is quite nice, I suppose. Not that expensive, I think it was about 30 or 40 dollars somewhere, it wasn't that expensive. If you don't have an ESR tester, then worth looking at one. But there's lots of different variations of this one, different brands, or at least different branding. Whether it's actually any different or not, I don't know. Thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, all that usual stuff. So I'll tell you every single video because, you know, everyone needs to hear it, I think. Maybe. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it. Catch you next one, see you in the next one. See you in the next one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.